Hey, good morning, everybody. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's the Lord's Sabbath. Hallelujah. It sure is good learning that stuff. You know, I used to criticize people um, for calling Sunday Sabbath. Oh, it's the Sabbath day. I'm like, it's not the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is the seventh day. Well, the Lord come and he'll humble you when, with truth. And you always go with the truth. You don't go with what you've said in the past to, to save face. I mean, have you looked in the mirror lately? You want to save that face over God himself? Go with God, man. Go with truth. Every time, go with truth, man. Uh, you shall know that truth, and the truth will set you free. And whoever the sun sets free is free indeed, man. And so be free indeed. Give up your old ways, your old thinking, and embrace what God has for you. And he has taught us through the watchmaker that the calendar has been wrong in several ways, many ways, and it's been corrected. And you and I embrace that. We love it and say, hey, hey, hey. And speaking of that, we begin our 360-day count, Passover count, tomorrow. And Yolanda is going to be uh, setting that up for us. And what's cool about us over here in the, in the westernized world is um, it'll be up when we wake up in the morning. She'll have it posted, man, because she's down there in South Africa. Be posting it right alongside of our other postings. And uh, catch those every day. Catch everybody who posts, guys. Aaron shares the Bible codes and other great stuff every day. Yolanda, Heather, Cush, Gary, Josh. I mean, the list goes on, guys. And share these things. Share, share, share. Uh, you came on at 11.11 here. <laughs> Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. 1111, or 111, triple one, is the fear of God. Amen. God's awesome. 1101, 1101s when we came on. Praise God, 1001 here. We got a 1001. Amen. Binary code. And we mentioned last night, what could God do with, you know, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 in his code? Right on. If ones and zeros can do all that on your computer, wow, God can do a whole lot more with two through nine and then some. Hallelujah. We love that. Kim says, good morning, family. Looking up. Abba up. Praise God. Abba up. Papa. Abba means Papa. That's what the month of Av means. So, uh, when you hear the V or the B, they're interchangeable many times in Hebrew letters, Hebrew town. Okay, uh, the month of Abib is also the month of Aviv, like Tel Aviv, and Av and Ab, Father, Abba. All right, so praise God for that. Hey, uh, we began studying the Book of Kings, man, last week. Why don't we go ahead and continue in that? I want to give you a suggestion. Uh, maybe get around with your family before church starts at 10 o'clock my time, 11 o'clock Eastern. And why don't you get you a half hour's worth of old hymns playing, and y'all sing together. Sing those old hymns, even if it's 15 minutes. But just get those hymns a go and teach those kids the hymns. Get them out, get them typed out, whatever, or bring them up on a computer screen while it's playing, and sing along, man. Sing the hymns, sing the hymns. Get ready, prepare your hearts. You got to prepare the table. You got to have a plate ready for me to drop the meat on. Okay, get your plates ready. And so many people don't have their table set. And uh, I encourage you to have your table set. When the Lord comes to bring you some bread and some meat, you be ready for that to plop right on your plate. And then get you a big boy fork and knife out and chew the meat up, man. Okay, and the meat of the word, meat of the word. I'm going to grab me some water here because that's what I do, you know. Amen. All right. Why don't we open our Bibles to 1 Kings. 1 Kings. Praise the Lord. I love you all. Happy, wonderful, what they call Sunday morning. Diane, good morning, Johnny. Good morning to you, sister. God bless you. Love y'all. Love that whole Stickney gang. Tell them all I love them. Heather says, yes, the old timers knew it. They were always singing about the rapture and praising God. Amen. And guys, when you look at Heather's posts, she, she'll post those old hymns. Uh, get her posts downloaded. Of course, she posts the uh, uh, countdown as well. And so 
Uh, and her, she puts a lot of work into that drawing board, man. So praise God. I love it. I love it. I've, I've loved watching those clusters form, the clusters of grapes. Amen. All right. Why don't we read? Why don't we pick up where we were last week? Get our minds in the heart of it all. Uh, why don't we go back to chapter 15? Chapter 15, 1 Kings 15. And we'll talk about Asa for a little bit because Asa was the guy who reigned for 41 years. And in his tenure down in the south, the southern kingdom, Jerusalem. Meanwhile, up north began Jeroboam and then his whole bunch. Um, in the whole, the whole life of Asa, he had seven kings from the north. One of him for 41 years and seven of them. Four different dynasties, all right? Uh, Jeroboam and his son Nadab, Baasha and Elah, Zimri, Amri, and Ahab. That was the kings that were up north while Asa was busy in the south. Now, Asa was a man of God. Asa was a man of God. He was, it was Solomon and Abijah and Asa, okay? Uh, Solomon, Rehoboam. Solomon, Rehoboam, Abijah, and Asa. Now, Solomon went wicked at, at his latter part, but kind of like on his deathbed, he gives us, guys, remember now thy creator in the days of your youth. Okay, and he says the whole the whole purpose of life is to fear God and keep His commandments. The whole conclusion of the whole matter of life you had better had feared God and kept His commandments. You can't keep something you don't know, and what what that means is keep them in highest regard. Love His word. Love in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth, all the way to and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And love every word in between that, knowing there is a hidden text, and knowing there's more than that. And we, we don't have the capacity to get it until we get to heaven. And it's going to be mind-blowing, man. The word of God, you, you think it's just, eh. The kings of the north, the kings in Israel, and, and it was also called Ephraim and Samaria, they didn't care one thing about the word of the Lord. They didn't know, man. And the word they had was powerful enough. They didn't have the entire Bible, but what they had was enough. And what was encoded there was enough. And the rest of it was already recorded in heaven. It was there. It was, it's on its way, man. And what, the word that you have right now, the word that you know, obey it, do it, keep it, walk in it, will you? All right. So let's look at uh, Asa a little bit here. We're going to look at 1 Kings 15, verse 9. And in the 20th year of Jeroboam, remember, Solomon had a foreman that worked under him. He was in charge of all his building projects. Trump's number one guy, kind of a thing. Solomon's number one guy, building all the projects. And the man knew that Solomon's heart was going wicked, wicked, wicked. And he said, oh, forget this, forget this. And he rebelled against him. And then his son, Solomon's son, after he died, becomes king, Rehoboam. And Jeroboam comes to him and says, hey, bro, we're willing to follow you if you're not like your dad. And the old men said, don't be like your dad. You be like your dad in the younger days. Don't be like him in the older days. And then he said, well, let me go ahead and talk to my young men. And they go, oh, man, you're the king. You're the boss. You, you treat them with scorpions. You sting the crap out of them. You, you whip them with belts. You, you put them in line, and you tell them you're going to do so. And Rehoboam went back and told Jeroboam that. And Jeroboam's like, see ya, and took 10 of the tribes with him up north. Then Rehoboam has Abijah and then the son Asa. And finally, Asa, ha Asa had a good mama that raised him. It's always these, see, when the kings would sire their children, they had several wives, concubines, whatever. The mothers would raise them. The mothers raised the children. And when it came time for Asa, he had a good mama that raised him. And she taught him in the ways of the Lord. And the, the conclusion of his matter is he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. And I want to look at that. We're in 1 Kings 15 verse 9. And in the 20th year of Jeroboam, after Jeroboam had split from Rehoboam, Asa finally becomes king, okay, down in the south uh, over Judah. Verse 10, and 41 years he reigned in Jerusalem, and his mother's name was Maacah, the daughter of Abishalom. Now, that's important. I don't know nothing about her, but God wanted us to know that that's who his mama was, and we're probably going to meet her in heaven, I believe. Okay, mamas are very important. You mamas? You're important. Bring your children Jesus. Don't bring them stupidity and don't bring them uh, sinfulness and don't bring them sports and don't bring them gods. Don't bring them music. You bring them Jesus, man. Amen? Amen. 
And so his mother is named here, and she's a very important gal, and I believe when the roll is called up yonder, her name will be on that roll. Amen? Verse 11, And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father. David his father? Well, you had to skip generations. Remember what God counts? He only counts the righteous generations. So it was David and Asa. But what happened to, you know, Solomon, Abijah, Re Rehoboam, Abijah? What happened to the, I, I don't know. I just know that he was like his father, David. That's the genealogy in heaven, guys. The genealogy in heaven is the saved. Not the religious, the saved. And you, if, you, if you're a descendant five down, you're going to go right up next to your descendant who is a believer in the finished work of Jesus Christ who's in heaven. The rest of them are like they never lived. Okay? That's what we got to do. They're like they never lived. Verse 11, this, you want this said about you. And she did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. And he did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord like King David did. Verse 12, and Asa, he took away the Sodomites out of the land. That's one of the thousand million reasons I know Trump ain't a good guy. Because he's all for the faggots. When you do that which is right in the sight of the Lord, you're going to remove the faggots. And, and he took away the Sodomites out of the land and he removed all the idols that his father had made. Get rid of all the football teams, the hockey teams, all this wasted money. And, and you're going to put people to work and we're going to uh, let everybody be blessed without having to serve God's. And the purpose of these gods is to keep you looking that way when God wants you looking that way. Looking that way, that way. Oh, we're in a ping pong match here. It's tennis, back and forth, one from one idol to the next. God's sick of it, man. This guy did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. He got rid of the sodomites and the idols that even his daddy put together. His dad's favorite team, he quit honoring that. Praise God. Quit honoring your dad's wicked idols and his wicked sin and what he did that wasn't for God. You do a very, very honest valuation here. Your dad. How much of him really was godly? How much of him really did he do for the Lord? And it was obvious. He, first of all, he's got to be saved. For by grace he is saved. We're not talking about Catholics, and we're not talking about Lutherans, and we're not talking about Presbyterians, and we're not talking about repent and be baptized. We're talking about people who believed in the finished work of Jesus Christ and were saved. Was this your dad? If it wasn't, your dad's in hell, and you got to embrace this stuff and quit following after the wicked gods of your father. But he was a good guy. Yeah, he doesn't even matter. The next genealogy up is the one who saved from you. We need to quit idolizing our idol-worshiping parents, if that's who they were. Now, some of you have a wonderful record. If, when you go to recollect and you think about your daddy, you think about your mama, and the things they did, boy, it was for the Lord. They just loved people. And you know that, according to God, he says she did that which was right in the eyes of God. He did that which was right. Is that you? Is that what the Lord's saying about you? Let's just suppose you're all saved. Now, after you've been saved... Are you living like you're saved? Are you still living like an idol-worshipping world, worldling? Who are you today? How much of you does God get? I'm going to encourage you to give him your all. All to Jesus I surrender. All to him I freely give. Is that true? That is the spirit of Passover. That is the heart of Passover. Passover is a free will offer. Uh, uh, Pentecost. Pentecost is a free will offering, and we just give him freely, all of us. I pray that you, and if it's not, you pray that it be you. Lord God, I want to give you all of me, man. I surrender all, and I mean it. I just ain't singing some cute song that I used to sing when I was a kid. I really mean it. I want to surrender all of you, Lord. It's all yours. I have nothing. You tell me what you want, and let's do that. Amen. Walk with the Lord. Verse 11, And Asa did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, as did David his father, Verse 12, and he took away all the Sodomites out of the land. Check. And removed all the idols that his father had made. Verse 13, and also 
Maka, his mother, he even removed her from being queen because she had made an idol. His good mama, his wonderful mama, she loved Jesus with most of her heart. But she also, she, she put a little statue of an angel and Mary out in the middle of her garden. It, it made it cute. And he said, you know what, Mom? You're no longer the queen in this kingdom. Get out. God's king, and there's no room for you. And he got rid of her from being the queen and took out her idol. His own mama, y'all. We could understand his dad, but his mom? You better be 100% for Jesus. So he can say, and she did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. His mama didn't, and he saw it. And he got rid of her from being queen, from being the example to the world. You're not going to be like this and be the queen in this kingdom of God. And he took her from being queen, middle of verse 13, because she had made an idol out in the middle of her trees, in the middle of her garden. And Asa destroyed her idol and he burned it by the brook Hydron. And that's where Josiah later, his descendant, that's where he burned all the stuff. Got rid of all of it and went down and got rid of all the gods, cleaned up the temple, cleaned up the place, got rid of the Sodomites himself. Boom. Right down there at Bro Brook Hydron. And guys, when Jesus was doing the Last Supper and they completed, they sang a song and then they went out to pray and they crossed over the Brook Hydron where all the false gods had been chopped up and severed and destroyed. Because Jesus is King of Kings, Lord of Lords, and he walks over your idols. And he's going to, and you better recognize that. And you better recognize any idols that you have in your garden, any idols in your grove, any idols in your heart, in your mind, and you better stamp them down. You better destroy them and place them under the feet of Jesus because he's going to cross over them. And you might as well offer them to him in destruction. And you better have at the end of your life, God say, and she did that which was right. In the eyes of the Lord, she got rid of the sodomites. She got rid of her mama. She got rid of her mama's ways. She got rid of her mama's gardening tips that always glorified the devil. She spent more time. She, she worshiped gardening instead of God. And we're going to encourage you to worship God instead and make him your everything. Amen. Verse 14, but the high places he didn't remove. He, he kind of, he loved the Lord. He did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord, but he didn't take care of all the business. He should have got rid of the high places. And he didn't. But the Lord still counted him for good because he had the heart for the Lord. But it says this, Nevertheless, Ace's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. Come on, man. Is that you? Is that you now? Is that you right now? Are all your ways perfect, complete, godly in the eyes of God himself? Do you honor the Lord? Do you honor Jesus? Do you honor his word above all things? And he knows it. He knew it about Asa and wrote it down for all of us to see and read. Because God does that. He's a recorder. He records things well. And what does he say about this guy? He did the right, verse 12. And he took away all the Sodomites out of the land and removed the idols of his, that his father made. He also took his mother and he removed her from being queen because she had made an idol out in her garden. And Asa destroyed her idol and burned it by the brook Kidron, Kidron, in the Kidron Valley. But the high places were not removed. Nevertheless, Asa's heart was perfect with the Lord all his days. Man, I pray this for you. M Mimi and I, we pray this for you. We pray this for you. We pray it for ourselves. Lord, help us to walk holy before you and be righteous, not be deceived, self-deceived. And help our people. Bless them, man. Bless them. Wake them up as they read your Bible daily, those 10 to 20 chapters. Get them where they need to be got. Bless them where they need to be blessed, Lord. We pray that for you because we want it to be said that you love God with all your heart and he knew it. Amen. And he did that. She did that, which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Verse 15. And Asa brought in all the things that his father had dedicated and the things which he himself had dedicated unto the house of the Lord, silver, golden vessels. He's going to reactivate the house of the Lord that his father and grandfather just were garbage about and Solomon destroyed and Solomon, you know, the seal of Solomon, that six pointed star and all the Satanism that went along with his temple. This guy said, no, you know what? We're going to purify it and bring in the righteous things of God. Amen. All right. Uh, why don't we, uh, where'd we get to last time? 16. Let's go down there to about, 
I don't know. Verse 15. We're going to be in 1 Kings 16, 15. And in the 27th year of Asa, now here we are 27 years later, Asa ruled for 41 years, and there were seven kings in the north that ruled and died and were murdered and cast down and everything in that same progress, in that same time frame. In, in the 27th year of King Asa and Judah, and Zimri reigned for seven days. Remember that? He uh, did a coup, killed the king, come in there, and he only reigned seven days, and the people caught wind of it, and they said, what? He's the one that killed the king? And he was in Terza, and at that time before Samaria was Terza. Samaria is the capital of the north, but before that it was Terza. Okay? And he reigns uh, only seven days in Terza, and the people were encamped in Gibeathon, which belonged to the Philistines. And the people that were encamped heard say, Zimri is the one who conspired, and he's also the one that killed the king. Wherefore, all of Israel said, oh, Omri. Now, Omri was the captain over uh, the Lord's host, okay, o over the armies, okay? And they said, oh, man, we like him a whole lot better than Zimri. Let let let's make uh, Omri king instead. And Zimri only reigned seven days. And then Omri took over. Let's keep reading. Verse 17, And Omri went up from Gibeathon, and all Israel with him, and they besieged Terza, the capital. And it came to pass when Zimri saw that the city was taken, he's the guy that reigned for seven days, he went into the palace of the king's house, and he burned the king's house over top of him, committed suicide, and he died for his sins, which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord, in walking in the ways of Jeroboam. Asa could have walked in the way of his wicked father, but he didn't. He walked in the ways, the teachings of his mom, and he began to study the workings and the ways and reading the scriptures of his daddy, David. When you begin to read First and Second Samuel in the Psalms, it'll change things in you, or it won't. We encourage you to at least read it. If you'll read it, God can do a work in you. He, he bases everything on, on your knowledge of the Scriptures. You know something, and the Holy Spirit will guide you through it and teach you. He'll correct you. He'll tell you what not to do, and He'll tell you what to do. And it's important that you read those Scriptures and you listen to His voice. Asa did that. And he didn't go in the way of his fathers. He went in the way of his great, great grandfather, David. Amen. We're encouraging you to do that. Go in the way of David. Read his, read his book. R read First and Second Samuel, First and Second Kings. That's what we're reading right now. You read those chronicles. You see who were the failures and who were the blessings and what was the difference. The word of God, the word of God, the ways of God. And she did that which pleased the Lord all the days of her life. Boy, let this be you. You know, we're going to start counting tomorrow on the prophetic calendar. And Yolanda's going to have that for us. Seven weeks. Seven weeks from tomorrow, starting on a Monday and ending on a Monday, is the 50-day count. What if the Lord wants to rapture us in 50 days? Or less. You know, that, and that happens to be the day after Jesus' birthday. I think that would be a tremendous time for a rapture. Jesus comes here. He... He leaves heaven and comes here as a human to save the humans. And he calls us on that very same day, on the self-same day, to heaven to be glorified, to be one of his adopted children in his glory. Go from earthling to heavenly. Go from the temporary to the permanent, to the eternal. Wouldn't that be a great day for all that? I think it would be. Uh, two weeks early would be a great day. That would be... The 16th is the end of the grape count. The 23rd, that's the picture of us going to heaven and Satan trying to destroy us. The seven-year anniversary of the Revelation 12 sign, September 23rd. So that 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th, some pretty powerful dates. You might want to throw in that, you know, September 11th thing too. The 11th, the 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th. Are you all ready? Have you lived every day for the Lord? Will he look at you and say, she lived for me? He lived for me. God will count. You can't live for him and his not reward it eternally. That's just his style. He's a giver, 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 giver. And what he gives is mind-blowing. Our salvation, guys, that we have is far greater than we can, can even know. But as far as I know it, it's mind-blower. What he did for us, and it's a gift, and we do believe, 
and we get heaven. I don't know what happens after that. That's the mind blower and how he saves us daily here from turning left when we should have turned right. When we normally turn right, he led us to turn left that day and saved us one more time. And he's doing that all day long. He's saving us daily. Our souls, our spirits are eternally saved once you believe. And then he continues to save. He saves every nanosecond. He gives you oxygen. He gives you food. He saves you from the jaws of the lion. The one who walks about as a roaring lion seeking to devour you. He saves us from him every day. His salvation is so vast, so wonderful, so every moment. I pray that you relish that. I pray that you meditate on that constantly and God is in all your thoughts. And so the guy went in, he, he was only king for seven days, and he went in and he saw that Omri had him surrounded. This is Zimri, and Omri has him surrounded, so he burns the palace down all around him, commits suicide. Verse 19, we're in 1 Kings 16, 19. For his sins which he sinned in doing evil in the sight of the Lord, in walking in the ways of Jeroboam, that was the first king who set up the two calves, everybody in northern Israel did that. They just kept adding to it. And you'll see that this Omri, when we re read about him, he did worse than any of the kings before him. Well, until his king, his son became king, then, then he did worse than his dad. Guys, your kids are going to do worse than you if you're, if you're doing bad. They'll do worse. Why don't you have the mindset that they're going to do better than you because you're going to lead them to the ways of the Lord. You're going to teach them to read the Bible. And in the next 50 days or whatever it is, five weeks to seven weeks, they're going to serve the Lord faithfully. They're going to watch you do it, and you're going to lead them to the ways of the Lord. Please do that. Walk the Bible. Kill your idols. Stamp them to powder. Get rid of your mama if she's in the way too. Keep her, keep her filthy claws away from your kids if her influence is rotten. Kill the queen, will you? Amen. So he walked in the ways, the wicked ways of Jeroboam, and in his sin, which he did, and he made Israel to sin. Don't make anybody sin. You, you, you make them see you serving the Lord, even if it means sacrifice and self-harm and doing without and sacrificing. You just follow the Lord. You please the Lord in all that you do and quit giving way to the flesh. You people that give way to the flesh all the time, guys, you don't know what you're doing. Quit giving way to the flesh. Follow the Lord. Follow after the Spirit. Say, God, I want you and I want everything about you. And the reason you are up and down, the reason your life is like this is because you're double-minded. You live in the spirit and you live in the flesh and you're unstable in all your ways. A double-minded man, flesh, wait, flesh, spirit, flesh, spirit, flesh. You see this? This is unstable. This is stable that holy high place of God, the holy plateau of God, Psalm 15. We talked about it last week. I hope you read it. hope you're walking in it. Why don't you quit being unstable because I just hate being around unstable folks. Don't you? Don't you hate being around people that are unstable? You don't know how to find them? They're up and they're down. They call it bipolar. God calls it wickedness. God calls it the fact that you will not focus in the word of God. Make that your anchor. Make that your everything. Make that your life. Make that your breath, your food, your everything, your existence. But no, you want to do that and watch a little TV. You want to do that and have a little me time and, and go out and do some running around and playing with the girls and going out with the boys and up and down, up and down, up. A double-minded man, fleshly, spiritual, earthly, heavenly. You're going to be unstable in all your ways, and that is not good for us. You are not being kind to us when you're unstable, when you're double-minded, when you won't walk after the Spirit, but you choose the flesh all the time. You want to have victory? Dump the flesh. Crush your idols. Destroy them so you can't go back to them. And throw them in the brook Kydron where you can't go swimming after them. Get rid of your idols. Get rid of your flesh. Get rid of that which makes you bipolar. Verse 20. Now, the rest of the acts of Zimri and, and the treason that he did, remember, he killed the king and only served seven days. Are they not written in the book of the Chronicles? You mean God chronicles bad things too? Oh, yeah. For the wicked. He does. These people in the Bible didn't get away with it. 
Why do you think you're going to get away with it? You, you forgot about God's record books in heaven? Now, he'll never hold our sin against us. Praise God for that. All of our sin has been put in his book. And don't ever forget that. God's a recorder. He's recorded every sin, but he's ripped out the page and put it in Jesus' book instead. Hallelujah. I encourage you to get saved today. Once saved, always saved. You place your faith in the finished work of Jesus Christ, be saved, and have no sin written against you. But now after you're saved, you have the opportunity to serve every minute for the Lord because that's being written down too. When he saved, he gave you a new name and there's a new name written down in glory and it's mine. Oh yes, it's mine. The white robe angels sing the story. A sinner has come home. Hallelujah. Every time somebody gets saved, there's a new name written down in glory. Now, why don't you live up to that name? Why don't you live according to that name? Why don't you live spiritually? Why don't you walk after the spirit, not after the flesh? Why don't you quit being bipolar for our sakes? Okay. Verse 21. Then the, were the people of Israel divided into two different parts. Half of the people, they wanted to follow Tibni, the son of Ginneth, to make him king. And the other half wanted to follow Omri. So the king kills himself. He burns the palace down around him, Zimri. He, served, he only were, uh, was there seven days. But then kingdom was divided. Satan's always dividing. Satan's side always wants to divide. You and I, our heart in the spirit, walking in the spirit, we're going to unify. We can't help but unify when we're walking in the spirit. But when you're walking in the flesh, there will be division. Where does division come from? Walking in the flesh. So half wanted to go with Omri, half wanted to go with this other dude. Verse 22. But the people that followed Omri, they were stronger and they prevailed against the people that followed Tibni, the son of Ginneth. So Tibni died, and that means their army overcame the army. They had a civil war going on. Good morning, Pastor. Hey, good morning. God bless you. Hallelujah. Right on, says Heather. Verse, uh, last part of 22, so Om Omri reigned. He killed off his competition. The civil war was over. Omri becomes king. They probably kill off all the guys that were mouthy and vocal and killed all those off. And then the loyals stayed faithful to Omri. And now Omri, this is the fourth dynasty already. He's the sixth king. Ahab is the seventh to rule during uh, Asa's day. And Asa's still over there serving the Lord, 41 years of it. Praise God. Could you last that long, 41 years serving the Lord? Or would you have to go back like Solomon did? I just got to chase the flesh. I've probably missed out way too much in this world. I'm going to divorce my husband because he just ain't giving me what I need. I, I feel I need more. I need to travel the world. His little paycheck just ain't enough. I, I need to get out there. And I just, I've fallen out of love with him. You've fallen out of love with Jesus and you love yourself. You're a Satanist. You're a devil worshiper. You love yourself because people walking with the Lord knows that he hates vow breaking and we're going to do everything to keep this covenant, man. We're not going to let the devil in. I'm not going to let my own wicked heart in. We're going to cast down the idols of my wicked heart, my thoughts. The thought of foolishness is sin. I'm going to read that Bible. I'm going to walk in that Bible and I'm going to be solidified in that thing. People around me is going to know it. They're not going to worry. And, oh, how do I expect to find her today? Walking on eggshells around you, the spiritual saved one. What kind of crap is that? Why don't you get off your sorcery, get off your drugs, get off of your living your two lifestyles, the flesh and the spirit, the flesh and the spirit. The, and why don't you just walk holy before your Lord, burn all your idols and come to the Lord and have him say at the end of your 41 years of being saved, boy, she did that, which was great in my eyes. I love it. Here's some reward. You ain't going to do something great in the eyes of the Lord. You're not going to walk honestly before him and his not reward it eternally. Don't let the devil steal your crowns, man. Don't let him steal the truth from the Old Testament. He's the same God, and he remains true. Let God be true and every man a liar. So here we are. We got Omri reigning. Verse 23, we're in 1 Kings 16, 23. In the 30 and first year of King Asa of Judah, he's got 10 more to go, don't he? Began Omri to reign over Israel uh, 12 years. Six years he reigned over in Tisra, that's where the, the palace was where the guy burned it down around him. And so he stayed there for six years. And then he went and he bought him a parcel of land on a 300-foot hill. And he named it Samaria 
and that's where that word comes from, and that's where the the kingdom sw switched over from Tizra over to uh, from Terza over to Samaria. Okay, and that's this portion we're about to read right now. Verse twenty four, and he bought the hill of Samaria of Shemer for two talents of silver. And he built on that hill, and he called the name of the place, which he built after the name of Shimmer, owner of the hill. He named it Samaria. And Samaria, guys, means the heaping. It was a 300-foot uh, hill, 100 meters. And Omri was the guy who built it, and, and he's the heaper. He built a heap, a pile of rubble for, the, for himself, against God. Samaria, we got the, the bulls of Samaria, we got the Satanist of Samaria, and then we got his son coming in, Ahab, who marries Jezebel of Samaria. They just keep heaping piles of sin on top of themselves. And that's what Omri's name means. Omri is heaping. And uh, But Omri wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord, worse than all that were before him. How in the world could he do that? Well, he reaped God's wrath upon him. Turn your Bibles to Micah, Micah 6, 16. Oh, the prophet Micah was talking about him, and he mentioned him, okay? Micah 6, 16, and he talks about this. He talks about Omri writing into law that you must worship these calves. It was mandated. Verse 16, Micah 6, 16. For the statutes of Omri, the laws of Omri, are kept and all the works of the house of Ahab, and ye walk in their counsels, that I should make you a desolation and the inhabitants thereof a hissing. Therefore ye shall bear the reproach of my people. And he made calf worship a mandate. They, you should just do it. Jeroboam set up the calves and, hey, we're going to keep you out of Jerusalem. You don't need to go back down to that temple. We got our own worship up here. And he said, I, I love God, and this is the way I'm going to worship him. That's what he said. Jeroboam at the beginning, I, I love God, and this is the way I'm going to do it. That's what the Catholics say. Oh, I love God, and, and we're going to worship all these, all these concrete idols here. We're going to leave Jesus on every cross that we have. The crucifix, we'll call it the crucifix. We, we, we love God, but we're going to oppose him at every step that we take. Because we don't read his Bible, we don't know what he says. We don't know his heart, we don't know his mind, because we don't read the Bible. We listen to that pagan, satanic priest in front of me tell me what the Bible says. That's the same thing that the Jews do, listening to the Talmud telling them what the Bible says. And when you got Satan telling you what the Bible says, it's going to be the same thing, he, it, his conversation with Eve. Has God really said? You're going to question the Word of God. That's why we encourage you to read the Word of God. 10 to 20 chapters every day. Get into it. Know it. Let God get into you. Let Him get into your mind, into your heart, into your thinking, into all your ways. Let all your ways be established in the Word of God, man. So here we have this Omri dude. Let's go back to 1 Kings. We got Omri writing statutes according to the book of Micah that you are going to come up here and worship these gods. Boy, if that didn't make God angry. And he was his name means heaping, and he just kept heaping the wrath of God against him. And he went and bought this Samaria hill, and it was just heaping wrath against it. Everywhere the wicked man goes, you're heaping the wrath of God. I encourage you to be a righteous man and heap up the rewards of God. Heap up the righteousness of God. Don't heap to yourselves teachers having itching ears. Don't pile those bodies up. You and When you find a real man of God, you're only going to find one or two. They're out there. Elijah thought he was the only one. That's how few they are, and that's how quiet they are. And in Elijah's day, they were threatened to be killed. They're up in the northern kingdom, up here in Samaria, and they were all being threatened with death and the torture and destruction and beheading if you're going to worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But they loved the Lord, but they just had to stay quiet, just like the communists. The communists don't go standing on the street corner saying, hey, I'm a Christian, though they love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength. And so here is Elijah loving the Lord his God with all his heart, soul, mind, and strength, and he couldn't find somebody else to do it. Fellowship with him. How about you? You ever felt that way? They're out there. There's our group and others. The others that haven't found out about us yet, and they speak different languages and couldn't understand as if we were talking to them in the face. But God knows where they are, and God loves their hearts. God's looking at the hearts. I, I hope when he sees your heart, all the stuff he's recording is, oh, for goodness sake, for his glory, Amen. pleasing him. 
And she did that which was righteous in the eyes of God all the days of her life. Amen? Glory to God. And so here we are, uh, verse 24, And Omri, he went and bought the hill of Samaria, and he called it Samaria. Verse 25, But Omri wrought evil in the eyes of the Lord. He made statutes and rulings and commandments that you're going to serve these gods, guys. You're going to serve these gods. And it was a religious mandate, a satanic mandate, just like Obama's going to do. In the tribulation, you're going to serve me and you're going to serve Satan and nobody else. And if you do, we're cutting your heads off. You don't think that's heaping up some wrath of God against you? Big time. But Omri, he wrought evil. He, he worked evil in the eyes of the Lord and did worse than all that were before him. And so he just kept heaping up wrath. His name meant heaping, and God said, I got something to heap up for you. Verse 26, And he walked in all the ways of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, and in his sin wherewith he made Israel to sin, to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger with their vanities. And there he says it again. We saw that in a verse last week, and now we see it again this week. And he provoked him. Guys, if you didn't see Cush's picture of that, I've got it on my site. Cush has it on his. It's probably buried way deep in his because he, he posts so many great things every day. But the anger of Jesus Christ, and he has got blood, and it looks like human explosive flesh matter on his face. And he's coming. His hair is wet with blood, and his anger is just enraged. People don't see Jesus like that, but the Bible describes him like that. You better understand that he is provoked unto anger by the vanities of these people. What is the vanity? Is trusting in everything but him. It's vain. Worshiping everything but him. It's vain. Idol worship, football worship, sports worship, music worship, movie worship, football, your favorite team. Putting on that strange apparel, guys, we're a football season. I'm going to encourage you not to have anything to do with it. You burn that to the ground. Even if your mama likes it, get away from your mama. Keep your kids away from that idol-worshipping hag. Okay? Verse 27. Now the rest of the acts of Omri, which he did, and his might that he showed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings? We encourage you to read Chronicles. And my wife took the challenge again. She's in Chronicles and loves it. There's some great stuff in Chronicles, some of the same stuff about these kings. Intricate details, the heart of God. You'll notice that when they follow the Lord, blessings, blessings. And when they don't, cursings, cursings. Simple. It's what we've been preaching here every service we preach. Amen. Follow the Lord Jesus Christ. Walk with him. Read his word. Love his word. It's not at all written in the book of the Chronicles, so go read the Chronicles. Verse 28. So Omri died. He slept with his fathers. Hey, guys, if you're going to go to sleep with your fathers, make it the heavenly bed, not the hell one. Don't make your bed in hell. Okay, you make your bed in heaven. When you go to sleep with your fathers, you make sure it's with David. Even if it's three fathers up, you make sure it's with that father. You make sure it's with the Holy One who walked with Jesus Christ and believed in him and trusted in him by faith. Amen. Verse 28, so Omri slept with his fathers. He died and he was buried in Samaria, the place he just bought to bring Satan all the glory, a high hill, 300 feet high. That's a football field, guys. A football field high was this little hill out there in the middle of everywhere. And Ahab, his son, reigned in his place. Oh, my goodness. Verse 29, and in the 30 and 8th year of Asa, he's still going. Gonna, got, gonna reign 41 years. King of Judah began Ahab, the son of Omri, to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria 22. Write that down. 22 is revelation. 22 is light. And this guy was the everything opposite of Jesus Christ in Revelation, the 22 chapters. He was more like the Antichrist of those 22 chapters. Satan himself. And he reigned 22 years in Samaria. Over Israel. Verse 30. We are in 1 Kings 16.30. And Ahab, the seventh king of Israel, the son of Omri, did reign in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. He did evil in the sight of the Lord above all that were before him. I thought he just said that about his dad. 
Yeah, well, the sons get worse and worse and worse. Dad, what kind of an example are you in front of your kids? And I mean this. Do they see you cheering for your favorite team? Do they see you sitting down with that beer and watching your favorite show every night? Is that what they're watching in you? While you take them to church on Sunday and say, oh, we just love the Lord. Hurry up and get in the car. We got to go. How are you representing Jesus in your home, Dad? This goes way beyond your reading 10 to 20 chapters every day. This goes to you living out your 10 to 20 chapters every day. Because your son is going to do far worse than you're doing if you're doing bad, if you're doing evil in the sight of the Lord. Oh, but I'm saved. Saved people do evil all the time. Some of the best hugs I've ever had by Christian brothers was in prison. They know how to hug you in prison. They Bikers, Christian bikers, unchristian bikers, they know how to hug you. It's your own cousin who's supposed to be saved that don't know how to hug you. Weird. This whole United States is jacked up, messed up, guys. Okay? I'm going to encourage you not to lead your son to prison. We may only have seven weeks left on this planet. But don't lead your son to prison in the meantime. If he were to keep following you in the same trajectory for the next 41 years, don't lead him to hell. Don't lead him to the couch. Don't lead, lead him to the scepter, the remote. Don't lead him to sinfulness. Don't lead him to materialism and let's go work on this hot rod. And let's go work on that hot rod. And let's pay tens of thousands of dollars on parts for this hot rod. I'm teaching my son to be a man. Why don't you teach your son to be a man of God instead? Brethren, now are we the sons of God. Why don't you do godly things with your kid? Take them fishing. That's godly. Teach them about the Lord Jesus Christ. Take them hunting. That's godly. I mean, you got to hunt. You got to fish to eat, right? Why don't you do it to the glory of the Lord? And why don't you let your car be your tool instead of your boss? And you being the slave to your automobiles and your hot rides. And I'm telling you, man, it's all over. It's epidemic in the Christian world. Oh, but we're glorifying the Lord when we get to the track with all them naked women. We're, gl we're glorifying the Lord with all those drunks. Yeah, we're out there praising Jesus. Why did you spend all that money on a piece of junk that you have to spend money on next week? Why didn't you give that to the poor? Why didn't you help somebody out who was really crying in your town? Lord God, please, please. I got my babies. I got these two jobs. I can't keep going. Why didn't you help her out instead of, you know, that old car of yours? I'm telling you, man, God is living America. He's coming to kill your cars, your hot rods, your garage. He's coming to kill everything about you and your materialism. I'm going to pray that everything about you is truly of God. Everything about you is truly God standing before you. And never one second is he out of your mind, out of your heart, out of your love. That you're pleasing him in all your ways. So here we have in the 38th year, verse, we're in verse 29. That's a big number, right? 29. The day of Jesus' birthday. We knew that 29 was huge for the last three or four years. Or maybe five. My time frames are bad. Let's just say in the last five years. We knew that that number 29, no matter what number it followed, 629, 529, 729, 29, we have just learned that's Jesus' birthday. And we've always known that's a powerful number. With God. God has presented it. You, you need to pay attention to this number. You need to pay attention to this number. And here we are in verse 29, so let's pay attention. And in the 38th year of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, the son of Omri, began to reign. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria 20 and 2 years. Okay, I'm paying attention now. I got the number 29 here and the number 22. Verse 30. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord above all. You write that down. He, he was the worst of the worst above all that were before him. And it came to pass as if it had been a light thing. Who cares? For him to walk after the sins of Jeroboam, which was the two calves. Jeroboam said, hey, y'all worship these two golden calves. You won't have to go down to Jerusalem right here. So serve him here. But if that wasn't enough, that he took to wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal. I'm going to say, I'm going to say Baal. Okay. It's Baal is how it's pronounced, but I'm a one syllable guy. I'm from the South here. And we say Baal. So when you hear me saying Baal, it's Baal. And Ethbaal, 
king of the Zidonians, and he went and served Baal and worshipped him. That's the gods of the United States of America. America, from its inception, from its laws, from the early days in New York City, ground zero until they moved to Washington, D.C., has always been Baal worshippers, Freemasons. The, the god of the sky, the god of the weather. What does everybody want to talk about? The weather, the weather, the weather. How come nobody says it's manufactured by men? God allows it, but how come nobody talks about that? How come nobody will recognize it? How come people have laughed at me for 12 years about the clouds being formed, chemtrails, kimbos, laughing, 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 people laying at the beach looking straight up, 15 airplanes crossing each other right over their heads and they, they don't see it. Oh, that I say, hey, do you see that right there? You know what that is? Oh, a contrail? Condensation in 35 below zero weather dissipates in about 15 seconds. <sighs> Exhaling at Lambeau Stadium in Green Bay. Those clouds don't stay around all day, folks, when you exhale vapor. But they'll stay around all day long when they're nanoparticles and either side of those nanoparticles are charged magnetically with a positive and a negative side and you can elevate them things you can keep them levitated you can move them north south east west up down with magnets electromagnets and you can control the weather and Baal is the god of the weather the god of thunder the god of weather forces and what do we see going on all around us gods put it in their hands allowed it in their hands since the 50s since the 50s, it was brought back. Now, it used to be this way before the flood. And now the demon science is back. And now it's happened after the flood. And now all these beautiful sunsets and sunrises, they're giving God the glory. Small g. They're giving Baal the glory. He's the one that did it. His people, they did it. Jesus Christ is coming back and he's going to roll back those clouds that they've made, that they tried to hide him, his Nibiru system. He's going to roll those back and come back and crush everybody and bring back his real weather. But this Ahab, he hated God. He loved the bulls because, you know, sinners love bull, and so do fleshly Christians. They just love bull. They, they don't like the truth. They don't like the things of the Spirit. They don't like things of heaven. But boy, that bull, let's talk that all day long. Let's waste our words. Let, let's just waste everything we got to say and talk about everything that has nothing to do about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Let's talk bull. Y'all want to y'all want to talk some bull real quick? Ahab did that, but he went a step farther and he wanted to talk about the weather. Hello. I hope you noticed the weather and how it got there. I hope you were watching the chemtrails from yesterday make the rainstorm today. I hope you noticed all of that because you were looking up. Gordy says, so friends are suggesting that I only preach the soft Jesus on my page because I am chasing people away. Shaking my head. You'll chase them all away. And when we get to Elijah here, you're going to see that that's what happens. And that's God's doing. Chase them away, man. You told them the truth. And after they've been chased off, when they're left here because they weren't truly saved, once saved, always saved, truly saved, they'll be like, okay, so where's Gordy's posts at? What was he saying? And they're going to be looking because truth will reign then. It doesn't now. Baal rules now. Baal's a liar. Okay? And so Ahab did worse than his father who had done worse than anybody before him. But this guy steps it up a little bit and says, I'm going to marry me a little horse slut. You guys got to remember about Baal worship. They have orgies. He married a gal that wouldn't stay faithful to him. She had to have sex with the high priests. While she was conjuring up devils and demons, modern day witchcraft, modern day sorcery, modern day Baal worship, modern day your government. All your government does this underground and have for years. Benjamin Franklin was doing this in France. The Hellfire Club. Read about it. Whoredoms, debauchery, drunkenness, nakedness. This has been the leaders of your, the writers of your constitution. And the pre preamble, we the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic truth. All lies, dude. Bail. Bail's a liar. 
Let our God be true and every Baal a liar. So he went and served Baal and worshipped him. Verse 32. We're in 1 Kings 16, 32. And he reared up, he built an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. So he got this high place to worship Satan at the high place. All these high rises, all these penthouses, all around the world, Dubai included, all around the world, these massive skylines are to worship the devil in. All these companies, they have a meditation room at the top of their, where a penthouse would go, it's their meditation room. And they bring all the people up and they meditate on Baal. They meditate on Ashtaroth. They meditate in Satanism, the Kundalini spirit, the black cube, the power of the black cube. You know, like the ones the Jew, Jews wear on their heads. You know, like the one, the, the black stone in the Kaaba. They walk around the Kaaba down there at Mecca. That black cube, the black cube at the United Nations Meditation Room. They all got this. That's the cube of Saturn. That's the cube of Satan. That's what everybody in your government worships. We stand here alone. I'll run all them off and I'll defy them. And we say we believe in the finished work of our Lord Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone is God. There is no God beside him and we stand up in the face of all this. But this guy, he did worse than his father and he reared up an altar of Baal, which he had built in Samaria. And Ahab, verse 33, we're in 1 Kings 16, 33. And Ahab made a grove. He planted a bunch of trees. And all these tree-hugging folks. You got to ask, why, are, why do they love trees so much? Because they believe in the power of the tree. They believe in the power of the nature god, Pan, who is Satan. And they got to have these trees all around them, these groves, because God said, burn the groves down, cut the groves down, get rid of all these places that they've turned into idol-worshiping gardens and get rid of them. And the wicked will come in and plant trees instead. You see that Israel does all that? Planting trees, planting trees. That's not the Israel of God doing that. That's not the Israel of Abraham doing that. That is the ones who say they're Jews and are not. They're of the synagogue of Satan. Let's plant some trees. Let's just plant more trees and trees and trees because they plan on putting idols in all those trees. They plan on putting up the statue of Barack Obama here shortly. And everybody around the world is going to have their groves and their trees with a statue of Barack Obama there. Verse 33, and Ahab made a grove, and Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger than all the kings before him. You know that's happening right now. You know that's happening with pastors in the pulpits. They've built up their groves. they got false gods, false idols everywhere, and they talk about them in the pulpit. They're not afraid of telling you about their favorite race car driver and just talk about him and, oh, build him up and encourage. They're all of the devil about their favorite football team and their favorite football star. It goes on and on and on. My wife and I, we were at the Jason Aldean concert last night. You guys don't know that that guy's a Satanist. You don't know that he's a Freemason. You don't know that he was the set up for that assassination in Vegas. The largest kill, kill zone we've had in the United States of America on Route 91. You don't remember any of that? His tattoo, 21, Blackjack, J.A., Jason Aldean, Joker, and the Ace. The pastor's glorifying that stuff. Building groves, baby. B building idols in your grove. And God's sick, and he's, they're doing more to provoke God to anger than the pastors that were before them. Verse 34. In his days did Hiel the Bethelite build Jericho. Uh-oh. What did Joshua say? Let's see, Joshua 6.26. Joshua 6.26. After Jericho was destroyed, God did the destruction of that. Uh, Joshua says, man, I don't know if I've ever stated it. There's a church here called The Grove. I guess they don't read their Bible or else they wouldn't call themselves something God hates. Amen. Amen, dude. Got witches running that joint. Witches have infiltrated the church and they have changed the doctrines of Scripture little by little by little from the light of the gospel, the light of Jehovah, to the light of Satan. Just to fade away. They didn't fade to black. They faded to light. Just the false light. They went from light to light and the people who don't read their Bible didn't know it was a fake light. Mm. 
Good word, dude. Uh, what does Joshua 6, 26 say? And Joshua adjured them. He, he affirmed them. He told them right in their faces, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that even attempts to raise up and build this Jericho. And he shall lay the foundation thereof in his firstborn, and in his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua. So Joshua sent out this curse. Whoever tries to build this up, your two sons will die. And what do we see over here at the very last part of 1 Kings 16? And in the days of Ahab, verse 34, did Hiel the Bethlehite build Jericho, and he laid the foundation thereof in Abiram his firstborn. The Canaanites had a practice. When you built a wall, you took your child and you buried him alive in the foundation of that wall to give you strength and power. And here we have this happening in Israel. Israel that was Canaan, but had been cleaned out, right? And the ways of Canaan came back. And Joshua was a book not too far back there in the past. And they hate him. He was the successor of Moses. And they hate Moses, the book of the law. They hate Joshua. They hate the commands. Whoever tries to build Jericho, your two sons will be wiped out. And this guy began to build it. And his two sons were wiped out. One at the foundation and one at the gate. And that's what they would do. They would bury their sons for power and prestige. And they sacrificed their own sons to build this wicked place. And Joshua said that's what's going to happen. And it did happen just according to that. And there is no Jericho yet. In the Bible, in Jesus' day, we see, and they came to Jericho and they came out of Jericho. That was a new Jericho. It wasn't the old one. It was like where I live. You got Memphis and West Memphis. Memphis is Tennessee, West Memphis is Arkansas. They're called the same name, but they're two different towns. And that's what people, uh, he went into Jericho and he came out of Jericho. It was the brand new Jericho. It's not this one that God cursed through his son. You know, Joshua is Jesus, right? Yeshua. And the final verse here, we'll call it a day. So the two sons were killed. His youngest son, uh, Segub, according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Joshua, the son of Nun. God's going to do everything according to his word. And you had better walk it. You better live it. You better walk it out and act it. They actually have some dark things happening behind the scenes uh, that I've heard. Things like known witches, hosting daytime, daycare, and drug cover-ups. Dude, that's what they're going to have. Everybody who opposes God, just like Ahab did, are of the devil. All these churches, they'll say Jesus... It's a different Jesus. And they'll always call God Yahweh. The Father, they always call him Yahweh. That's when you know the Canaanites have taken control of it. Jesus' name, God's name, the Father, yod vav Jehovah, Jehovah, Yehovah. Jesus, Yeshua. Probably an Illuminati plant. That's what's going on there. Illuminati. Purple. It's all at your Paris. They've, they're all out from under the ground now and have been for years, guys. They have passed the point of no return and they know it. Only the rapture saves us. If the rapture wouldn't happen, then we'd all be dead. We'd all be beheaded. They'd kill us all. But God is into saving his people. And we love it. We love the idea. Come on, bring it. Seven weeks from tomorrow. Six weeks from tomorrow. Five weeks from tomorrow, does that sound great to anybody? Come rapture us, Lord. We believe in that rapture. We believe in that saving. We believe in that snap trap. God's going to save us. And boy, everybody who's stuck here is going to be trapped. We wish that on nobody. We pray that for everybody to be saved. But they won't be. The majority will laugh at us and make fun. And you just keep being true in, the, in their face. And you go to, according to the word of the Lord. Ahab didn't. Ahab did everything opposite. And he married that whore slut sorceress. And we'll, by God's grace, look more at that next week. Amen? Walk in the word. Do the, you gotta know it, man. Know the word of God. Pray the word of God. Teach the word of, if you will teach your children and a, a group the word of God, you'll have it hidden in your heart deeper. It'll be deeper in the crevices of your brain. Because when you're saying it, faith comes by hearing it. You, you read it, you study it, you say it, and you'll grow in the things of God. Teach your children, teach your children, teach your children the Word of God. Read it out loud, just like we're doing here. And teach them what the Bible says. 
And uh, like, come get us, Lord Jesus. Don't be more wicked than the one before you. Why don't you do that which is right in the sight of the Lord? And he pleased God. She pleased God. She uh, gave up her own mother for God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hey, let's pray. Oh, Jesus, we love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for these people. Thank you for the faithful who love your word, who walk your word, who desire your word, who hunger and thirst after it. And I pray you'll fill us. You promised you would. That's, that's the joy of it. They that hunger and thirst after righteousness will be filled. And I love that filling. And I pray these people here are getting a good dose of it today. You're encouraging hearts and convicting hearts who are sinful, who are both ways, who are bipolar, who are fleshly and spiritual. And I pray you'll remove, kill, kill the flesh, Lord. Destroy the flesh in us. And may only your spirit activate us, guide us, teach us. And we walk according to the things of the spirit, not after the flesh. And we praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, guys. Love you dearly. Love you dearly. God bless. Good having you with us this morning. We'll continue on by God's grace next week. And, uh, of course, tonight, the 726, I'm going over our Bible codes as the Lord leads, man. Pray for Sean. Pray for one another. Heather says, in Jesus' holy name, amen. That's what I'm saying, too. Praise the Lord. By His grace, we'll see you tonight. Walk with Him holy. I knew it. This uh, always takes a long time for you guys to respond. That's just what we do. But amen. Amen, says Erwin. Amen, says Aaron. Sister Aaron, praise God. Yolanda says amen. Donabelle, amen. Awesome sermon, brother. Praise God, man. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. God's good, guys. And uh, walk with him this week. Destroy your idols. H have God identify your idols. Lord, what's in my heart? Or I, is there any idol that I have that I have not crushed, that I have not destroyed, that I've not given to you? Am I walking in the flesh in any way? Kim says, I never learned more about history. Explain so much. And present day reality and his word than we have here. Amen. Praise God, dude. That's what we want. We want to encourage you and teach you things all Bible. Amen. Josh says amen. Savio says amen. I'm so thankful for you brothers and sisters. God bless you. And by his grace, we will see you at 726 tonight.